Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Logic. This video of the video playlist, you'll be using your blue belt in Logic to master categorical syllogisms. Now, a categorical syllogism is a kind of deductive argument that is made with categorical propositions. And if you don't know what a categorical proposition is, please go down a level in this video series to the green belt level. In this video, you will learn how to make a categorical syllogism into standard form and then test it for validity by using a cheat sheet about the mood and figure. Let's begin. A categorical syllogism is an argument that has three categorical propositions. The argument will have three different terms. Each term will appear twice in the argument. The three terms are named the middle, the minor, and the major terms. An easy way to remember these names of the terms is to think about baseball. That is, you have the major leagues, the minor leagues, and there's always something in the middle. The conclusion of the argument will always contain the minor term and the major term. The subject of the conclusion is called the minor term, and the predicate of the conclusion is the major term. The term that is repeated in the premises is called the middle term. All right, let's work a practice problem. In this syllogism, what is the term running backs called? Press pause if you need more time. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! The middle term. The middle term is repeated in the premises. Next, what is the term athletes called? Press pause if you need more time. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! The minor term. It is the subject of the conclusion. Next, what is the term coaches called? Press pause if you need more time. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! The major term is the predicate of the conclusion. A very good job on those practice problems. And now that you know what the major and the minor terms are, you can determine what is the major and minor premises. It's simple. The major premise is the premise that contains the major term. And the minor premise is the premise that contains the minor term. To put the categorical syllogism into categorical form, you put the major premise first, and then comes the minor premise, followed by the conclusion. Think baseball. You hit the home run right off the bat. This is your major premise. But it's not complete until you run around and then touch the home base again at the end with your major term at the end of the conclusion. Major, minor, conclusion. We'll take a look at this syllogism. Now you will notice that it is not in standard form because the statements are in the wrong order. To put it into standard form, the first step is to find the conclusion and write it at the bottom. To help you find the conclusion, look for indicator words. Next, look at the conclusion and find the major term, which is the predicate of the conclusion. Next, find the premise that contains the major term. This premise is the major premise. So write the major premise first. And next, look at the conclusion and find the minor term which is the subject of the conclusion. The premise that contains the minor term is the minor premise. Write the minor premise second, 
below the major premise. And congratulations, the syllogism is now in standard form. So let's work a practice problem. Now for this syllogism, what do you do first to put it into standard form? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! Find the conclusion. Next, which statement is the conclusion? Press pause if you need more time. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! That's correct. The word so indicates the conclusion. Next, what line do you write the conclusion on? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! The conclusion always goes at the bottom. Look at the conclusion. Which term is the major term? The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! The major term is always the predicate of the conclusion. Which premise is the major premise? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! The major premise is the premise that contains the major term. And lastly, write the minor premise, the one that contains the subject of the conclusion, below the major premise. And presto, the syllogism is now in standard form. The major premise is written first, the minor premise second, and the conclusion last. Good job learning the standard form. Next, we will learn about the mood and figure of the categorical syllogism. Take a look at this syllogism. It is already in standard form. The conclusion is written last. The predicate of the conclusion, which is the major term, is in the premise, which is written first. And the subject of the conclusion, which is the minor term, is in the second premise. Now, we will symbolize the argument. We will use letters to represent the terms. This will make it much easier for us to find the mood in figure. Now the mood, well the mood is simply the letter names of the propositions. For example, if the syllogism consists of three A propositions, then the mood is AAA. -A -A. Or if the syllogism has an A proposition and then two I propositions, the mood is a, I, I, and so on. The figure of the categorical syllogism is the order in which the middle term appears in the premise. There are only four possible orders in which the middle term can appear. That is here, 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 or here. The figures can be diagrammed like this. The M represents the possible locations of the middle term. P represents the major term, which is the predicate of the conclusion. And S represents the minor term, which is the subject of the conclusion. Now, if you can memorize the figure somehow, it is helpful. One way is to imagine a shirt collar. In this syllogism, the middle term is C. The positions of C correspond to figure 4. Now you can determine what form the categorical syllogism has. The form is the combination of the mood and figure. This syllogism is the form E I. O four. Now that we know the form, we can check to see if it's valid. And how do we do that? Well, fortunately, all the possibilities have already been checked for validity. And we know which combinations are valid and which ones are invalid. But I'll show you how to do it anyway in the future videos. For now, Here's a list of all the unconditionally valid forms. And here's a list of all the conditionally valid forms. The condition is that of the Aristotelian standpoint. 
That means if the form is on this list, then it is valid if one of the terms represents actually existing things. If the form is on this list, then the syllogism is valid regardless of whether or not the term represents actually existing things or not. For example, the form AEO4 is valid on the condition that S, the subject of the conclusion, represents actually existing things such as a cow, a cat, or a fish. Let's work a practice problem. Practice problem number one, symbolize this syllogism and then choose the correct standard form. Now press pause if you need more time. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! The predicate of the conclusion is in the first premise and the subject of the conclusion is in the second premise. Next, what is the form of the syllogism? Press pause if you need more time. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! The position of the middle term is on the right, so it's figure two. Now, is the form of the syllogism, which is E O O O 2, valid or not? Press pause and check the list, which is in the description box below for a list of valid forms. Press pause now and take a look. The answer, it will appear in three, two, one. Ding! The form is not on either list. And since the form is not on either list, is it valid or invalid? The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! Invalid, because it's not on either list. Next practice problem. Symbolize this syllogism and then choose the correct standard form. Press pause if you need more time. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! This is the correct form. Next, which combination of mood and figure conveys the form of the syllogism? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! This is the correct form. Since this form is on the list of conditionally valid forms, what condition must be met for the syllogism to be valid? From the Aristotelian standpoint, press pause if you need more time. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! S must, must exist. Now, since S does exist, is the syllogism valid from the Aristotelian standpoint? The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! It's valid. Now, if S did not exist, it would be invalid. Very good job on those practice problems. Now, I want to ask you a question. Do you have the skills, the skills to reconstruct a categorical syllogism from just the mood and figure? If you're given the form AEO3, the first thing you do is write the conclusion, symbolizing the subject with the letter S and the predicate with the letter P. Next, look at the figure to see where the middle term goes. Since it's a figure three, the middle term goes on the left in both premises. Next, P, which is the major term, must go in the first premise, and S goes in the second premise. And finally, enter the quantifiers and the copulas. All right, let's work a practice problem. Given this form, what is the conclusion of the syllogism? Press pause if you need more time. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! We always use S for the subject and P for the predicate. Next, where does the middle term go? The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! This is the correct position for a figure four. Next, what is the correct answer? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! P, which is the major term, goes in the first premise. And S, which is the minor term, goes in the second premise. 
All right, very good job on those practice problems. You are now one step closer to advancing to the next level. See my other videos on logic. Comment, like, share, and subscribe. Oh yeah, and have a great day.